Hi, welcome to 22 and 22 slash 23. Today's topic is the vagina. So first, let's talk definitions. I already made a video on the vulva, which basically describes the private area region of female anatomy. Within the vulva is the vagina. So we're having this as a separate topic. The vagina is the hole that's in the middle of the three holes. So toward the front of the vulva, there's the clitoris and then the urethra, which is essentially the pee hole, and then the vagina, and then the anus. So we've identified where the vagina is. The opening to the vagina contains something called the hymen, which this is my rough little demo here, but it's basically tissue that surrounds the opening of the, the vagina. Some people, when they are born, when they develop and grow, the hymen tissue, barely noticeable at all, doesn't cause any issues. For other people, the hymen tissue might be a little bit uh, larger, covering the opening of the vagina, in which case, whenever there is penetration, like with a penis or a finger, sometimes that hymen will stretch or tear but hymen is the tissue that surrounds the opening of the vagina. Now, past the hymen, the vagina itself is essentially like a tunnel or a tube that leads to the cervix, and the cervix is the opening to the uterus, so the inside reproductive tract of female anatomy. So think of the vagina as the entryway and the guarding post for entry into the female reproductive tract. Now, for that reason, again, as an entryway, it has to protect itself, which means it will secrete some fluids. Within the vagina, there are some glands that produce a certain type of fluid that makes the vagina itself less favorable to bacteria or other pathogens, bad, bad things that can enter into the vagina and in the reproductive tract. So the fluids that come out of the vagina are actually protective. They are protecting your insides from anything that might come in through the outside. So that's important to know that vaginal discharge, while it may seem a little uncomfortable, is actually serving a purpose. The composition of that fluid itself is going to be on the acidic side, which means it might have a little bit of a vinegary smell, and that would be totally normal. That would be expected, again, because it is serving that purpose of killing anything bad that might be trying to get into the female reproductive tract. So some of these glands can occasionally get plugged up whether that's from vaginal penetration or friction or just getting plugged up, and they might cause little cysts or bumps. Um, in particular, there are things called Bartholin glands that are toward the entry of the vagina that again can sometimes get plugged up and cause little bumps or swellings toward the entry into the vagina. These are very normal and nothing to be worried about. Things that you can do for them might be uh, sitting in a warm bath or soaks to try to help open that cyst and help it drain. But if it ever gets super painful or if you notice any abnormal kind of like a pus discharge, it's worth talking to a doctor in case it's infected. Now, other things that come from the vagina, period blood. So this is where period blood comes from. It actually comes from with from within the reproductive tract, so within the uterus, but period blood comes out of the uterus through the cervix into the vagina and then out. This is why using a tampon or a menstrual cup um, placed in the vagina will help catch fluid period blood that comes from your period from the uterus and a very normal part of having female anatomy. Now you might also notice some changes in your vaginal discharge throughout your menstrual cycle, which is the period between two periods. The cycle time is from one period to the next. And so those fluid changes are not necessarily vaginal discharge, but cervical discharge. So coming from a little higher up. And it's all a reflection of the hormone changes that are going on in your body. So you might notice that 
midway between your periods things get a little bit thicker maybe a little bit clear almost like an egg white and then discharge kind of goes away until your next period that's very normal again it's all a reflection of the hormone changes that are happening uh, because of your menstrual cycle and if you ever have any questions or concerns if things change too much if they have an abnormal smell um, if they look different in appearance if they're itchy or painful those are times to talk to a doctor because certainly things can happen and throw off your typical discharge like sexually transmitted infections um, bacterial vaginosis yeast infections and those are all things that can impact the consistency the amount the character and the smell of your vaginal discharge so if you notice any significant changes chat with your doctor which brings me to Again, discharge is normal without any of those other changes that we just discussed. So it's really important that you not wash in the vagina. Outside of the vagina, in the vulva area, in the labia, totally fine, but you never wanna put fluid or soap in the vagina itself because again it's self-regulating and it is a protective entryway into your reproductive tract so never wash it out if you do have questions about an abnormal smell or discharge talk to a doctor but as we discussed the sort of vinegary smell and changes in the consistency of your discharge throughout your menstrual cycle are super normal now the question that uh, plagues a lot of young people is when is the first pap smear and the pap smear is the exam where a doctor looks inside the vagina at the cervix and they do so by inserting a speculum that opens up the vagina and allows them to visualize the cervix this is not done in the united states until someone is 21 years old unless otherwise indicated um, so keep in mind that this exam will eventually be a part of routine care because we otherwise can't see the cervix so it really is an important way that we get a good look at the cervix get a sample of the tissue around the cervix just to make sure everything is healthy um, but that is what the pap smear is don't worry about it until you're 21 or over on to your questions i'm 17 years old and I happen to find some white color lumps on my vaginal opening. What could it be? I've tried some warm water, but still no use. So white colored lumps. Um, certainly these could be just little inclusion cysts. So um, you can find little inclusion cysts throughout your vulva, in particular within the labia, um, the labia minora. Um, it's also possible these could be little glands, so vaginal um, glands that secrete the good healthy fluid. Um, it's also possible that these could be genital warts. It all depends on your sexual experience, if you've had um, penetrative or oral sex, if you're not vaccinated for HPV. That's certainly on the differential, um, but I'm not entirely sure what these look like. So um, other than you just say they're white color lumps. So if you are especially concerned about an STI, having sex, sexually transmitted infection, um, chat with your doctor. Question number two. I'm 15 and I feel a lump in the left side of the vagina, not the vulva. It's not painful. So this is quite possibly a Bartholin gland cyst so on the left side and it's not painful um, what I might recommend again is um, some soaks in the bathtub to try to see if you can kind of open it up but it's also possible it's something like a like a lymph node um, tough to say for sure again if you have any concerns or if it doesn't open up and drain um, always worth chatting with the doctor um, Question number three. My girlfriend said her hymen broke while she was riding a bike. Is that possible? So one, yes, totally possible. Two, it's sometimes hard to tell when your hymen breaks. So um, sure, if, if that is her story, she is entitled to that and it's quite possible. She may have noticed some bleeding, uh, but generally when people's hymens tear, um, 
it, it can be asymptomatic. So sometimes with gymnastics, with bike riding, um, younger folks don't notice when that hymen tissue stretches or tears. Um, certainly more commonly with penetrative sex is when we do notice more bleeding um, with the tearing and stretching. It's absolutely possible that her hymen tore with bike riding. Absolutely possible. Question number four, can my partner feel my hymen? Interesting. So um, if it is your first time having penetrative sex and the finger or penis is inserted into the vagina, it is possible that they can feel sort of a um, the skin or the tissue that surrounds the vaginal opening. Um, with time, again, that hymen will stretch and tear um, and thereafter it shouldn't be noticeable at all. So if it's your first time or two or three with penetrative sex, it's possible that they might feel it a little bit, um, but thereafter, no. Question number five, do you know anything about a septate hymen, tampons, intercourse, etc., and what can I do about it? Great question. So I mentioned that most of the time the hymen surrounds the vaginal opening, but sometimes there are variants of the hymen tissue, including the septate hymen which is where the there's a septum and a piece of hymen tissue goes across the vaginal opening. Um, this is, is pretty common and you might not know unless you look at it with a mirror uh, or providers looked and said, oh, there's a septated hymen. So a few things. It's certainly possible depending on the opening size to use a tampon. I generally recommend something like a Playtex tampon because they have a tapered and that makes it easier to pull out the tampon. Sometimes with like a Tampax, it's a little bit more square and the edges can catch on the hymen or the septum. So um, I do like a more of like a tapered tampon for that, but um, so that would be my recommendation if you have a septate hymen. And then with intercourse, very possible. Um, intercourse with a penis or with fingers um, may possibly tear that septum and cause some bleeding, might be a little painful, um, but that should improve and resolve uh, within a day or two. So um, allowing that tissue to heal, but that would be sort of the expectation. Um, if you speak with your provider about this, there are also things called dilators, which you can insert into the vaginal opening, the septum, the septated hymen, and it's a series of smaller to bigger girth, essentially, um, dilators that slowly stretch the hymen. So um, there are also medical things that we can do to help with septate hymen so that when there is penetrative sex, or if your goal is to use a tampon, to stretch that out a little bit so that it's possible. Question number six, is a man's pre-cum the same substance as the wetness from a vagina, the clear slimy stuff? <laughs> so um, great question, great thinking. No, it's different. So um, vaginal discharge includes both the, the fluids that are created for specifically the vagina. Um, although they do have characteristics of them that make semen, sperm within semen, uh, it allows them to survive. So kills bacteria, but allows the sperm to survive. Um, and then also characteristics of cervical discharge, not the same as pre-cum. Um, or semen, but great question. Um, different composition, but both of them, uh, both pre-cum, ejaculate semen, and vaginal cervical fluid allow sperm to survive. Question number seven, is discharge that looks like mucus normal? Yes. So again, you'll notice some changes throughout your menstrual cycle, so keep track of it, but usually like that mucus snotty look is more around the time of ovulation. So the time about two weeks before your next period, but usually happens somewhere mid cycle. So keep track of things and see if you notice a pattern, but I would say absolutely normal. Question eight, the color of my vaginal discharge is normal, but the smell is always foul. How do I get rid of the smell? So sometimes people have a little bit of a stronger odor um, and I would recommend talking to your doctor just to check to see if there's something called bacterial vaginosis contributing to a change in smell. Might not be, but certainly could be. Um, you might have a little bit stronger smell. Um, 
and that's okay. I do recommend, again, making sure you have good vulva hygiene, so keeping things as clean as possible, removing any of the oils or dead skin cells within the vulva, so between the labia minora, um, with good washing, but never wash in the vagina. That's going to throw things off and, and make it worse. So um, worth chatting with the doctor, but some people do have a bit of a stronger smell from the vagina, and that's okay. It might help to wear more um, breathable underwear, like cotton underwear, um, just to keep airflow a little bit um, more open. Sometimes keeping smells contained, don't wear leather um, or like polyester type things that could potentially trap air in there. So wear breathable underwear. Um, question number nine. I'm a little embarrassed, but I have a question. My vagina has a slight fishy smell and sometimes I have a brown color discharge. Is that normal? So fishy smell always triggers bacterial vaginosis for providers. So it may or may not be BV, but definitely worth talking with a doctor for testing. Um, brown discharge, if that's associated with the smell, could be BV. If it's more associated with pre-period, that's more likely just some older blood um, coming out that's been oxidized. So um, it depends on when you're experiencing the discharge and the smell, but um, likely get checked for bacterial vaginosis just in case. And then same recommendations as the previous question, loose breathable underwear. Question 10. I had a yeast infection and went to the doctor for it and he gave me a cream. Unfortunately, it didn't work and my vagina is still irritated, way too much discharge. What is this? This is an untreated yeast infection. So a lot of providers um, like to go with topical treatment for yeast infections. We, what we know is that sometimes that's ineffective um, and it's uncomfortable. You have to put the medicine in your vagina and then it gets all over everything. If you have the chance, and especially if you're going into a, into a provider, I would recommend asking for the pill. So Diflucan, one dose usually takes care of things. So what you've got is an untreated yeast infection and the next level up of treatment is gonna be uh, Diflucan. Uh, if, if a doctor offers you the insert, the applicator, um, or if you buy it over the counter and it doesn't work, ask for the pill, but I always offer the pill. It's much better than the applicator. Um, so, those are your questions on the vagina. Um, stay tuned for the next 22 and 23. Thanks for watching.